Chicago with a ferocious comeback for their first win of the season against the Fever. They had two wonderful NCAA tournament games, but Reese had the big one because Reese won the national championship and stuck it in Clark's face. I think this is going to be around for a while, and I think that's good. Did yesterday feel like a game between an 8 and a 9 seed? No, it felt like an incredibly intense you know, playoff atmosphere with huge stakes, and that's because it is a rivalry, and I think it's going to be a pretty great one for a long time. Sportsman Life presented by Progressive Insurance. WNBA is hotter than ever. And we're already this season having massive rookie of the year debates. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, we're we still have more season to go. Like, we know the season's not over, right? Like, and we're still having these rookie of the year debates. Um, and each game, each, I believe, what, 40 game season in WNBA, if I'm not mistaken, 20 home, 20 away. Um, and Angel Reese. 14.1 points per game, 11.9 rebounds per game, is a double-double machine mm-hmm. for the sky. And Caitlin Clark, 16.1 points per game, 6 rebounds, 7.4 assists per game. Also great numbers. So in terms of who should be Rookie of the Year, I think the answer, as um, everyone should probably say, is yes. Yeah. Right, that's it. Yes could you, is could the you answer. Have a, could you have a co-Rookie of the Year? You can because oh, didn't. can you imagine? That happened. That would be so good, wouldn't it? Oh. Co-Rookie of Glenn the Year. Glenn Robinson Reese, and Jason and Kidd. And Clark. 94, is that right? Am I getting that right? Or I, I could be wrong on that. I, d- I doubt you are, because that's a deep cut that you just came there up with. There was a co-rookie of the year <laughs> yeah. in the NBA at some point. Somebody could look that up for me. Um, if People possible. would be infuriated, though. Oh, People would be infuriated. infuriated. But it is a vote. It's like, you know, it's not, f- well, they would think it's fixed, I guess. All right, so who should be rookie of the year? So we're, it's an early debate. Who should be rookie of the year? I don't know. I don't have an answer to it. I, I, don't, I don't think oh, you Grant can Hill have- and Jason Kidd. I apologize. Grant Hill and Jason Kidd? Co-rookie of the year. I said Glenn Robinson. Yeah, my I, mean, yeah my I, I, I don't know that you can call a race right now because it's neck and neck. It's so tight. Now, I know Caitlin Clark is the overwhelming favorite, mm-hmm. and she's more of a household name. But, I mean, Angel Reese is no slouch in her own right. I mean, she's got the WNBA record for the amount of double-doubles, whether you're a rookie or not. She she leads the league in rebounding, rookie or not. Like, she she has done some phenomenal things and is a big part of the culture change that's happening with the Chicago Sky. So, I don't want to dismiss anything that she's accomplished, but I think people recognize Caitlin Clark a little bit more. I think she has proven to be transcendent and coming off of what she did last year in the collegiate ranks, uh, being able to set the points record for men or women. I think that momentum is ultimately what's going to be the deciding factor in this race that she's having for rookie of the year. But I mean, both of them are making a strong case. And right now, I think the race is too close to call. You could make a really compelling argument for either one of these women. And how great for the W that this rivalry that had already baked in college comes to the W and both of these rookies are doing exactly what they need to do, which is be great on their respective teams. The fact that you could make a really compelling case for Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese looking at different metrics is insane. It's awesome for the WNBA. I would have to give the slight edge to Caitlin Clark, even though I'm not 100% comfortable with that based on the double-double record that Angel Reese has. But think about over the weekend, right? Angel Reese recorded her 13th consecutive double-double, continuing the league record, right? That was on Sunday. The day before, Caitlin Clark became the first rookie in the WNBA to get a triple-double. And Mm -hmm. she did so against your New York Liberty, against a juggernaut of the team, a a juggernaut of a team in the WNBA. 17-4 and are the Liberty. It's, it's insane what both of them are doing, and they're elevating their teams as they perform individually as well. But I would give the slight edge right now to Caitlin Clark, but if you made an argument for Angel Reese, I've got nothing against it. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Do we give extra points to Caitlin Clark because of all of the animus and the vitriol that's been directed toward her, not just through the media, but actual WNBA players too? The physicality. The physicality. Enduring. I mean, Kennedy Carter pushing her in the back like mm-hmm. the way that she did. I just – there's – WNBA players feel some kind of way about the fanfare that Caitlin Clark came into the league with. So sure. with Caitlin Clark having to overcome all of that and now be on the other side of that adversity and we're seeing her natural talents take over and we're seeing her actually be productive in her team, have that translate to wins for them. I, I just, I, I feel like that might be the piece that gives her the slight edge to this point over Angel Reese. Cause listen, I'm not saying that Angel Reese 
hasn't caught any slings and arrows. There was the hard foul, the flagrant one, where she was slung to the ground by, I think it was Alyssa Thomas from the Connecticut Sun. And everybody was like, that's not a basketball play. And it wasn't a basketball play. So there, there's a little bit of smoke for Angel Reese, but not to the level that we've seen for Caitlin Clark, not by players across the W. And so I guess that might be the piece to me that gives her the slight edge just because of the degree of difficulty in terms of what Caitlin Clark is doing and what she's had to overcome in her rookie season relative to Angel. It's an interesting thought you're bringing up, and it confirms the obvious, but people don't want to acknowledge it, is that people vote for these awards, not computers. Meaning you can't just look at stats. Storylines no. matter, right? Like when Nikola Jokic didn't win the third straight MVP, everybody was saying, well, voter fatigue. If you're doing it based on a computer, there's no such thing as voter fatigue. It's a person saying... Am I really going to vote for this person again? Coach of the year in all sports is never the best coach. It's the coach that leads the team to the most wins that you didn't expect them to have, right? So that's a storyline. What you're bringing up is the storyline around Caitlin Clark. We thought she was entering the league with a big plus. It actually was a big minus yes. because of all of the people seemingly going against that no, story. It, it was a big target. Target. <laughs> However, a, you want to. No, no, you're right. It's a yeah. big minus, but it equated to being a big target. Right. Yeah. So in your voting, if Chris Canty had a vote, you're a person, which means you have feelings and emotion, unless you're Hembo from Greeny, <laughs> like that you're factoring in the, the feelings and emotion around the fact that one is a target, one is not. Now, that's not basketball. That's a storyline. But you have, there's no guidance for how you're supposed to vote on that. But you could make the argument, though, that Angel Reese also had a target in a different way. She's had to talk about leaning into being the villain in this rivalry. And she's endured a lot of pressure and a lot of scrutiny in different ways as well. So while Caitlin Clark had to endure it on a different level, and we see the physicality that she's had to deal with, versus her peers and she's been at the center of this conversation point in the WNBA Angel Reese also has talked about the fact that she's had to deal with that stuff as well in a different way yeah it's different it's definitely different but they're both center of attention for the league which is great and the fact that like halfway through the season or whatever it is exactly